Jared Smith. And welcome to the final episode of the sixth season of The Transcript. This week, the folks of The Transcript get an inside look at Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Turn up the spirit with NHS's Ultimate Teams. And look into the history of Mother's Day. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. Alabama Senate voted 25 to 6 this week on a bill to make performing abortion a felony. The bill outlaws abortion in almost every case, including those of rape and incest, and only allows it when the woman's life is in danger. It was signed into law by Alabama Governor Kay Ivey yesterday. The law will take effect in six months. After contract negotiations between the teachers' union and the city fell through this week, Northampton Public School teachers will start Work to Rule beginning on Monday. Work to Rule is an action teachers can take where they only do as the contract says. For Northampton, that means teachers will arrive at school around 7.20 a.m. and leave at 2.05 p.m., as written in their current contract. Clubs and sports run by teachers who are stipended will not be affected for the rest of this year. However, if Work to Rule runs into next year, some teachers will refuse to accept said stipends. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini from The Transcript. And you're watching Tell It Like It Is. In case you didn't know, this month is Asian and Pacific Islanders Heritage Month, a time to reflect on and celebrate culture and traditions. For my last week on the transcript, I wanted to learn more about the role heritage plays and how one conquers their goals. I talked to Dan Ko to hear about his journey and how his background has affected the way he approaches his political success. My name is Dan Ko. Um, during the day, I'm a partner at a technology startup called HQO. Um, at night, I'm an Andover Town Selectman, uh, which is the policymaking arm of the town of Andover. Um, and uh, I used to be a candidate for Congress in the 3rd District. I was fortunate that my father was the Commissioner of Public Health in Massachusetts, so he was in the public sector um, was one of the only Asian Americans to ever serve in government at the time, and he was really a trailblazer in that regard. And the only way things get done is when more perspectives are at the table. I think there needs to be more minorities at the table, and Asian Americans especially, um, have a lot to offer. After reaching out to other politicians in hopes of another voice, I heard back from Representative Ro Khanna, a Democrat from California, who said, I'm proud to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, particularly in an era when minority groups have experienced increasing discrimination and intolerance. I know from my own experience that diversity is our own strength. I also heard from students Karis Jackson and Jasmine Chia to hear how their heritage has affected their lives. I know that Northampton High School is like a predominantly white community, but I think it would be really cool if like we did things throughout the year that could celebrate diversity and like represent other cultures. For example, celebrating Chinese New Year would be really cool. When you're going into a predominantly white field, I definitely do think that your race can present certain challenges, but I think that if you work hard and you just do what you love, that your hard work will come through and yeah, so I think you should just go for it. So because of my raise, I think I might have to work a little bit harder to prove myself. Um, and in, like, in school in general, I think people think it comes easy to us, um, but I don't think that's necessarily what's always true. Never be ashamed of who you are or where you're from. Instead, go forth proudly and work hard to follow your dreams. Wishing you one last happy Friday. Barry, catch! Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? For the last week of the transcript, I decided to catch up with members of the Boys and Girls Ultimate Team to discuss the history and significance of the Pioneer Valley Invitational Tournament, what spirit of the game means and what it feels like to be nationally ranked, and much more. I went out and through with my fellow teammates and my captains, Mary Andrews and Rachel Levitt, to discuss what PBI means to them. Hi guys, thanks for Hi. being on. Hi, Hi thank you so much. So could you explain a little bit about PBI and why it's such a big deal? Yeah, so actually this year, PBI, I think we have 65 teams coming from across the country and Canada. And for the girls tournament, it's gonna be the largest high, girls high school tournament 
in the whole world ever. So it's a huge deal and like honored to be hosting it. Yeah, it's also just like a really huge deal for um, our program and like our team as a whole. We do like a ton of prep. Um, and it's like also really fun. What is it like being like the host school and like what expectations does that bring? Like do you feel any added pressure? Like obviously this is my first PVI so but like do you feel any added pressure being like the ones who are hosting and running the tournament and kind of what does hosting technically mean? Yeah I think being the host team kind of puts more pressure on to win the tournament like it's kind of it's really fun and um, I think often the host team does win so um, I think there's some pressure to do that, but also just to kind of bring the energy and be really excited about the tournament and like set up and make it the best experience for everyone else so it can continue and teams will continue to want to come. Thank you so much for being on my last Tamped Up. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> from the boys team, I sat down with senior Jason Cooper and junior Asa Thompson. I feel like this year compared to last year, our team is a lot more cohesive. Um, there's a lot less of a divide between the upperclassmen and lowerclassmen, which I think that we felt very much last season. Um, whereas uh, this season, we are all kind of a big unit and we play very well together. I think that makes a big difference in our game. So last year, we had a really good first day at PVI. We went three and one in group stages, I think. Um, but then transitioning to Sunday, our next stage, we, we kind of fell off a bit. Um, and so I think this year we need to make sure that like Saturday night, Sunday morning, we're really preparing our bodies and, and making sure that we're um, as ready as possible for those next few games on Sunday so that you know, after we play well on Saturday, we can follow it up with a good performance on Sunday. I feel like there is definitely some pressure on us to be good spirited and, um, you know, really play our best, uh, which is often stressful because we have some very competitive teams that come to this tournament, um, including the fact that this year is going to be the largest number of high school girls team at a high school tournament ever. So that uh, definitely adds some additional stress uh, to our team. Yeah, I think there's something really special about being able to play against a team where you where you're good friends with people. Um, you know, there's there's nothing like being able to guard one of your best friends and like um, trying to shut them down and having that competitiveness. Or even if they're not your best friends, just you know, like getting to know someone off the field and then getting to go and play them is something that's really fun and special. I definitely prefer filming Hamped Ups, but the best is when I get to interview and film the same episode, like the golf episode. Come see both the girls and boys ultimate teams at the Pioneer Valley Invitational Tournament all weekend long at the Oxbow. For other sports news, see that whiteboard outside of the athletic office. This has been my last segment. To Jeremy, Mikey, Gabe, and every transcript member past and present, I want to say a big thank you. To every teacher who plays a transcript on Friday mornings, thank you for keeping our broadcast alive. The past two years have been an honor and a pleasure. One last time, thanks for watching Hemped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Hi, we're Amelia Tamayo, and welcome to In Other News. Last year, 86% of Americans expected to celebrate Mother's Day, and they expected to spend, on average, $180 each. But Mother's Day isn't just about the money. There's meaningful ways for everyone to appreciate the mothers in their life. For example, in 2016, 78% of Americans bought greeting cards for Mother's Day, 55% of Americans went on special outings for Mother's Day. That's all fine and dandy, but let's see how mothers in our community celebrate Mother's Day. For Mother's Day, um, I asked my two daughters if they would come to the Sunday morning yoga class I like to go to, and they both said yes, so that was really fun. And uh, then we got smoothies afterwards, and we hung out, and it was sort of a rainy day, so I think we napped. Being a mom is, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's the hardest job you can have because it goes on and on. It's a real Zen lesson in trying to stay calm and roll with it and remember what's important and what's not important. Um, focus on, on the important things. It's a joy. It's 
taught me a lot. There's so many great memories. Um, recently, I just uh, have gone to see both of my girls perform in their choruses, and that's a great joy. Um, and I also had a really cool mom, and it's funny that you caught me today because this is one of her shirts. This is not usually what I wear, but um, when she, you know, when she passed away a few years ago, I was taking all of her clothes to um, Goodwill and whatnot, and this was the one shirt that I thought, you know, I'm going to keep that one and wear it now and again. So I had a mom who was really enthusiastic and um, never sweat the small stuff, and I think um, I try to channel some of her every day. We wanted to talk to some students about what they did with their moms for Mother's Day, so we took to the halls to find out. So what did you do to celebrate Mother's Day? Um, my family and I went to the beach for the weekend, and then when we got home we invited um, all of the sisters uh, over for just um, a nice little dinner and stuff. My family went to Hamilton in New York. I shoveled mulch. <laughs> um, I got brunch at a cafe in Vermont. I ended up just having like a brief uh, picnic style in indoor brunch with my mom, but it's nice. We got her some plants and then we went out for lunch. Have you guys ever called a teacher mom? I have not. I think so, but I don't remember. Did you then celebrate that teacher for Mother's Day? No. I have not ever called a teacher mom, but one time I did have my mom as a substitute teacher. So in a roundabout way, yes, but she was actually my mom, so it was okay. Gotcha. I did do it a couple times in middle school and it was really embarrassing, but. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> did you guys then do anything to celebrate those teachers for Mother's Day? No. Not yet. <laughs> I think so. I don't remember specifically, but I probably have. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has watched and been a part of my segments this year. Couldn't have done it without my fans. Goodbye. Thank you for being a friend. Hi. 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 I'm Gabe Nicotero. Welcome to Hamped Up. Did it go in? Yes! Let's get it! Y'all ready for this? If you read my tweets, you'd know that this week's episode is the last of the year. I thought it would be best fitting to compile my favorite funny moments throughout the years, so here you go. What have you started? <laughs> it's not gonna work. Good morrow. I'm Gabe Miguetera. Yeah, I'm in a tire. But who cares? Welcome to Hamped Up. <laughs> Together, we've really um, stepped it up. Uh, last year, we kind of had a losing record in general. Uh, we had two wins. This year, we have, we're have five and six right now. So it's a solid season. Definitely, everybody stepped it up. Brad stepped it up. Our other senior. So. Can you give me this season's record prediction, please? You know, I, I just feel like our team is really strong this year, and I think we'll probably go undefeated. Hi, I'm Lulu. <laughs> Welcome to Hampton. <laughs> How has being a natural left-handed citizen on the field hockey team affected your social life and or grades? I'm right-handed. <laughs> Actually? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right-handed. Oh, my bad. <laughs> can, can you? <laughs> That's going to make it worse. The PNS indoor. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get you. Stop. Okay. <laughs> no, we gotta that. <laughs> Can you give me this season? <laughs> nope. <laughs> More, <laughs> more, go past the edge. 
I'd like to say how grateful I am for having been a part of the transcript these past few years. I've gotten passionate for making videos and because of it, I'll be pursuing a career in film production. Thank you to everyone who's ever watched an episode. You guys are real ones. Just remember, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a huge thank you to everyone who's worked on the broadcast over the past three years and made the transcript into an Emmy winning broadcast. In addition, huge shout out to all the parents, teachers, and students that tune into our broadcast every week. We appreciate your unwavering support. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching the, the transcripts. transcripts. Yeah, man. Uh.